Go ahead, please. Arthur Ashe was an electrifying talent, famed for winning the US Open, the Australian Open and Wimbledon, the first and to date only black man to lift those trophies. But Ashe's influence spreads far beyond the tennis court. He led the fledgling ATP when it was a union, not a governing body. He was a key figure in sports attempts to isolate the racist apartheid regime in South Africa during the 70s and 80s, and he was a strident speaker for social justice. And yet he never intended it to be that way. This is the story of how activism changed Arthur Ashe and how he changed activism. 1968. America resembled a tinderbox. Martin Luther King's assassination had sparked protest riots across numerous cities. That November, a racial segregationist won five states as a third-party candidate in the presidential election, picking up almost 10 million votes. It was against this backdrop that Arthur Ashe, a bespectacled 25-year-old Army lieutenant, won the US Open, his first Grand Slam title. He was the only black man in the 128-strong field. As Ashe put it, as noticeable as the only raisin in a rice pudding. But a landmark victory and the profile it gave him did not instantly turn him into a fiery social campaigner. That sort of role didn't sit easily with him. In fact, his quiet, polite demeanor was by design, drilled into him by his early mentor, Dr. Robert Walter Johnson, the coach of Althea Gibson, the first African-American woman to win a Grand Slam. As Ash wrote in his memoir, Johnson insisted he be unfailingly polite on the court and unfalteringly calm and detached so that whites could never accuse me of meanness. He also taught Ash to effectively consider the court three inches smaller, to eliminate the possibility of racist line calling and to never show dissent towards an official's decision. So when he won the US Open, his understated celebration didn't reflect a moment of history being made, but it did reflect the man, unfalteringly calm and detached. However, this quiet, unflappable resolve, honed in his formative years to neutralize racism, stood him out from the crowd in the maelstrom of the late 60s. Prominent civil rights activist Jesse Jackson told Ash he wasn't arrogant enough. Of her own activism, Billie Jean King remarked, I'm blacker than Arthur. Ash, of course, would have burned with injustice inside. He grew up in segregated Richmond, Virginia, and was forced by the city's whites-only tennis courts to learn his craft first in St. Louis and then at UCLA in California. And after his US Open win, Ash did begin to question his naturally aloof stance from the civil rights movement. There were times when I felt a burning sense of shame that I was not with other blacks and whites standing up to the fire hoses and the police dogs, the truncheons, bullets and bombs. As my fame increased, so did my anguish. What shoved him out of neutral was his experiences with apartheid South Africa. Three times in the early 1970s, he was rejected for a visa when he tried to enter the South African National Championships. In 1973, with South Africa keen to rejoin the Olympic movement, he was finally allowed in. I looked apartheid directly in the face, saw the appalling whites-only and non-whites-only signs, the separate and drastically unequal facilities, very much like those of my childhood in Virginia, he wrote. I saw the sneer of superiority on the face of many whites, and the look of obsequiousness, fatalism, cynicism and despair on the faces of many blacks. He spent the next two decades speaking out against apartheid, testifying before the US Congress, giving speeches to pro-boycott crowds and, in 1983, forming artists and athletes against apartheid with singer Harry Belafonte. In January 1985, he was arrested for protesting in front of the South African Embassy in Washington, D.C. He was still the USA's Davis Cup captain at the time, but resigned later that year when learning the US Tennis Association wanted to replace him. Ash long harbored the suspicion his activism wasn't welcomed in some tennis circles. The USTA saw me as someone far more concerned with politics than a Davis Cup captain should be. And by politics, I'm sure they meant radical politics. But Ash was not a social firebrand. His complicated range of views included arguing against affirmative action for minorities, as he believed it fostered a cult of entitlement. He was also, at one point, against Billie Jean King's demands for equal pay for female players. He voted both Republican and Democrat at presidential elections. Ash didn't live to see a black man in the White House. 
He died in 1993 from AIDS-related pneumonia, having spent the last 10 months of his life setting up a foundation to help raise awareness and bust the many myths around AIDS. Towards the end of his presidency, Barack Obama named Ash and Muhammad Ali as the sports figures he admired most. They were contrasting personalities, but the studious tennis hero and the brash boxing legend used their wider public profiles to create different templates for sporting activism. Those paths are now being followed by the likes of Colin Kaepernick, LeBron James and the sports stars who have taken a knee. Ash wasn't the first trailblazer, but he did show the way for an alternative activism of quiet determination, nuance in thought and strident in deed.